Hi, and welcome to Bloody Good Screen Movie Club. We are back again, going through the wonders of the cinema. But this time, we're staying away from horror. We've gone a little bit action orientated and letting the guys run free. Well, I say kind of, one of them is kind of horror, more thriller. But I'm letting the guys run free with their choices this time around. Uh, so, as always, I am joined by my three movie loving co hosts. So, as always, Chloe Davies. Hello. Marcus Wallace. Congratulations, Hello, by yeah. the way. Clap, 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 clap. Oh, thank you. And, uh, and no, we're not. Hello. No clapping for me then. Always clapping for you. <laughs> That's fine. Always clapping. Who, 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 who's right. now found his new brand new favourite movie, One Hour Photo. So, before we get on to that. <laughs> <Lol>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be right down the middle of this with that movie, but cool. Um how are you guys doing? You you had a uh, a meet up and I wasn't there. I'm very sad by that. Yeah. yeah. Met Chloe yesterday. For the first yep. time. Yep. You're welcome. <laughs> She's incredibly loud in real life. She's actually quite annoying. <laughs> and extremely <laughs> tall. Very, very tall. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bless. <laughs> um, so in a way, the rumours that me and Chloe are the same person still stand. Cause yeah, yeah. Right there. nothing yeah. to disprove it yet. Really. Yeah, nothing to disprove. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yes, congratulations to Marcus for your engagement. Well done. Thank you. Thank for, you. Uh, for in this world of another, another marriage. Oh, it's going to be awful. Uh, I mean, wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. If she's in the same room as you, you're going to get smacked at the end of this, you know. Don't you? Yeah, headphones are in for a reason. <laughs> oh, no, she just gave me the look. No, no, I was saying lovely things. You got some spring <laughs> rolls yesterday, <laughs> so I'm already for it. Stop there kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> We're fine. It's all, it's all good. I'm sorry, Marcus's partner. I'm really, I'm sorry. Cool. But, um... As I always ask at the start of each each uh, time we do these podcasts, it's been a long month. So, have you guys watched anything good? And then go to Chloe first because Chloe's our normally our main go to person for good film. So, what have you watched this month? Let's see. Um, I don't think I've actually watched that much since we last recorded. Um, most of watching TV, I think. But I, I don't know if we. I don't know if Barbie had come out by the time we last recorded. I don't think it had. No, no. I saw that as very, very good. I saw Oppenheimer as well. I think Barbie is my favourite, though. Um, I also saw Meg 2, which it's fine. Like, the, the third act is the best, but, like, up until that, it's a little bit boring. But I just, I love Jason Statham. And when it gets going at the action, you know, with the action at the end, that's all good. Um, but does saw... he punch a shark? I don't think he does punch a shark. I mean, he fights a shark. But not doesn't necessarily not punches. punch like, but yeah, there's definitely a shark fighting going on. You know, um, so like cocaine shark. <laughs> yeah, and, and I was also the guys, and obviously the guys behind Fright Fest didn't didn't hate the movie at all. Oh no, God, don't! That's <laughs> so mortifying. I could not do that. <laughs> yeah, because they really screened a lot of films there. I think so. It's like, could you imagine? Like he's done three there, hasn't he? He did um, yeah. Sightseers. He did Kill List there. I'm not a huge yeah. fan of Ben Whitley, I'll be honest, he's not for me, but Sightseers I love. But I think even if I didn't like him and I was like the the organizer of a horror festival, I don't think I'd shit on someone like that. I couldn't do it. <laughs> what so what that happened? Is, so basically, um It's bold. One, one, one of the main guys from Fright Fest hmm. completely shit all over him. <laughs> the director of the movie. Because he's done some really good films. He's done Kill List, he's done Sightseers. Um Wait, what really what film's this? What one are we talking about? Meg 2. Oh, right, okay. He's gone on to do Meg 2, and they uh, kind of buried him publicly via social media. Yeah. So. It was yeah. rough. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, Kill List and Meg 2, I can I can see it, but I wouldn't go and do it on social media on... Like, like and, privately, and tag, you know. <laughs> and tag in your festival. So what was, the, he... what was the issue with it? Was it like him selling out, or was it just because oh, it no, was a crap was... film? Pretty much, I think. Didn't he say something like he hasn't made a good film since Kill List? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it... that's a great way to, you know, advertise, considering... isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I just feel like the, the, considering the two films that he also released after that were at Fright Fest. Yeah, exactly. It's like you know, that's someone who you know screens up there a lot, so it's like, eh, you might see them in the future. That's a bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I also saw Haunted Mansion. Um, what a waste of a cast! <laughs> like. <laughs> 
this movie would totally totally suck pretty much if it didn't have as good a cast as it does like it has like Danny DeVito in it and stuff and it's like Owen Wilson's also pretty good in it but you know what the actually the effects weren't too bad but I actually was surprised by how much I enjoyed the effects and things um it has some good shots and stuff but it really wasn't very spooky at all to be honest um it was kind of you know when like the uh, product placement is so distracting it's <laughs> that um that was my problem with it um and yeah the last thing i saw that wasn't the films we're doing today i watched red white and royal blue which is like this adaptation of a book and it's like you know like those um sort of hallmark movies and it's like two mm-hmm. royals like full in love but it's kind of forbidden yeah so like these these this prince and the president's son um like they hate each other but then they like become friends and then they like fall in love and stuff and it's like so corny and it's like i was cringe i was physically cringing at some of it but it was also like but you know when you kind of love that kind of pain when you watch something like that it, it's kind of fun why does that sound like it should be a bollywood film <laughs> it kind of does doesn't it? <laughs> it's so wacky that it sounds like it should be yeah and you know it is kind of funny in places so i'll give it that but yeah it's like proper cringe and like i kind of love that though and I kind of immediately wanted to rewatch it because it's just sometimes you just want to switch off and watch like a cheesy romance, you know. Um, so yeah, I had fun with that. Cool. I think it makes a bit mix of movies. I, I want to see Barbie. I really do. But... It's very good. Oh, oh, you should. <laughs> it's basically, it, I've heard good things, but we, we'll wait till it goes into kind of home cinema because we don't have time to go to cinema. Um, Let's go to Marcus. What you watched this time around? You've been very busy with your uh, with, your, with your life, and you've probably been watching a lot of Walking Dead. Um, actually, no, I finished that uh, a while ago. Oh, all of it. Okay. Uh, all of it. But I've been I've been busy. Um, I've had a bit of a film sort of uh, fest going on. Ooh. So I uh, I've watched films like Barbie, which is amazing. Um, mm-hmm. you go see it if you haven't already. Uh, I watched Extraction Two. Netflix uh, mm-hmm. original, and um, after our p- last episode, uh, I may have got into the Alien and Predator films a little bit. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> kind of went on a bit of a binge. Um, I have seen Alien, Aliens, Predator, Predator Two, Alien Three, <laughs> Alien Resurrection, Alien vs Predator, Alien vs Predator, Requ- uh, Requiem, Re- Requiem, Requiem. That's the one. Yeah. That's the one. Predators, Prometheus, Alien Covenant, The Predator, Prey, uh, and I'm waiting for Alien to come out in 2024. Okay, <laughs> oh this God. is more films than you watched in the entirety of last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? I was going to just spoil next week's episode, which is going to be all the Alien <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> no, I'm joking. joking. Bloody oh. hell. So what did you think? Oh, well, in, in order, your uh, your ratings. Of um, I oh, I watched them all in order, um, and uh, yeah, they they're good. Um, the Alien films, I really liked how they they kept to the storyline. And um, f- for those who haven't watched them, as you watch the newer version, well, the new the newer films, the past does make sense. Now I mentioned when we reviewed uh, AVP that the storyline didn't make sense, and it you know I didn't know what the hell was going on, and that's why I didn't really like it. If you watch all of the films, it makes perfect sense. But you have to watch them all <laughs> for it to make sense, which isn't a good film in my eyes. But um, yeah, they are good films. The storyline is there when you watch them all. Um, and yeah, the sort of the makeup, the uh, I don't think they have CGI, but all of the, what do you call it? Uh, bells and whistles, special effects, all that stuff. It's really good. Um, I, so which one's they're... better, Predator or Aliens? I, I wanted it to be Predator, but I think Alien. Really? Or the Alien series. Yeah. What, what, about, you watch from, all... what about from Prometheus, though? Because Prometheus, I thought, was absolutely shockingly bad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't really like that one <laughs> too, too much. Um, I mean, if you go back, obviously, through the first Alien, um, they're a cargo ship, aren't they, that you know goes through space. And it's like, oh, actually, yeah, it turns out uh, you were an experiment this whole time. whoop de do. Um, Prometheus... Uh, fairly similar thing someone that wasn't really meant to be involved is somehow now an experiment and uh so they crash and it's like oh what's going on it, it, it all stems from for some reason the government and every or the space government whatever they are in every single one of the alien films just wants to fuck over a random ship with the alien breed oh, damn, like, oh yeah we it's like yeah we want this um 
we want this thing as a weapon, but no one can control this weapon, and it adapts to any environment you put it in. Hmm, yes, let's try this again for like the 20th <laughs> time. And lo and behold, something goes wrong. Um, but yeah, they are a good watch. I, I'm not going to spoil really much about them all. Uh, if you haven't seen them, go do it. it. It's one of those things that if you have time just to binge them all in one setting, the storylines do match up, and they will make references to the past films, etc. And you think, oh, yeah, I remember this bit. Uh, or, oh, that explains this part in this film, and it's so on and so on. Just and imagining you films. with a whiteboard now, like mm. <laughs> with all the strings tying them all oh, together. Yeah. Oh, it makes sense. Like that guy in, um, oh, what's that? Yeah, TV Charlie show? from Always Sunny. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's what I'm imagining as well. Pepe Sylvia does not exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but have any of you seen any of the other Predator and Alien films? I think I've seen Covenant. I think that might have been the first one I watched. Like, but I've seen, and there was another one, the most recent one I think for Alien. Uh, probably what it was. Oh, for Alien. Sorry, that. Uh, yeah, I'll be Covenant. Covenant really yeah, was it Covenant? Movie. Yeah. The one with Danny McBride. Is that am I thinking of is that Alien? I'm sure there was I'm sure that was a different film, but maybe I'm getting mixed up. You're thinking yeah. of Tropic Thunder. I <laughs> 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 sure I don't think I've ever actually watched that film. What? Are you kidding? I know. <laughs> Which is crazy. But I might have watched bits <laughs> of it, but yeah. No, I'm sure there's like an alien film that had <laughs> Danny McBride in it for some reason. But, he was in yeah. Covenant. Yeah, it must have been. I'm sure it was another one I watched before that, but um, yeah. he played Tennessee. Mm. Does he blow the one stuff I'm up? Thinking, the he other one I'm thinking of is oh. uh, the one with Spoilers. Michael Fassbender. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Prometheus. <laughs> that's Prometheus. Okay, yeah, that's the first one I watched then. Yeah, I'm I've sorry. seen that one and Prey, and other than that, I haven't seen any of them other than the ones we've done for the podcast. Mm. Prey is the most recent in the Predator films, which is ironic because it goes way back to when they first discovered Predator. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it's really, really good. That one. It's okay. Yeah, gets all muskety. Did we do it on here? What Prey? Yeah. No, not yet. Yeah, I feel like I would have watched that for a reason. It sounds like a film we would have done. Yeah, it was released last year, so maybe just because it was new and it came up. Maybe. And it was on Disney mm. Plus. So. Yeah. Maybe. I've seen all the aliens. I haven't seen all of the Predators. I remember kind of... what I don't actually remember one and two too much, but I watched them when I was younger. But I haven't seen the ones after that. I show. remember two's in New York, I think. It has Danny Glover in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. That, sound, that looks more fun than the first one. <laughs> it's a lot more action-y. Uh, well, I suppose the first one is as well, but it's very much like... Gives you like Miami Cop style vibes. And... Uh, mm the the guy who Danny plays is literally just like he's a, a maniac uh throughout the whole film he's just like oh I gotta kill this thing like yeah let's go after it and he just like guns for it doesn't even care he's you know messing with FBI agents and all sorts because he's like nah I want to do this and then like fucking stay out my way this has nothing to do with you it's a fucking alien he's just like yeah but no <laughs> I've already committed now I'm doing it and yeah it's it's a good watch uh, and it also um goes into weaknesses about the predator uh, a little bit more which I don't think we see as much in the first film. Um, but yeah, it is a good watch. Cool. No, what have you been watching this month? Um, not much. I spent and saw Oppenheimer in the IMAX, which mm. was insanely good. Everybody should go see it in the IMAX, but maybe not at nine o'clock like I did, because <laughs> it's three hours long. Um <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I loved it. It's really good. I need to go and see it again. I might go see it again in the IMAX next month sometime if it's still on. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Okay. It's a very short month for you. Yeah. Um, I've been mostly watching TV. So we started watching The Witcher, which actually isn't too bad. I'm actually quite enjoying it. Um, and we did Secret Invasion, yep. which seems it was good, but it's definitely in the wrong timeline because it doesn't really match up with the current kind of story. I just, I found it weird because like, spoiler alert everyone, but mm -hmm. Maria, uh, close close your ears, Marcus. Um, hang on. I'm going to take my headphones out for like 10 seconds. Yeah, you got 10, 10 seconds. seconds. Okay, when well, Maria I'll... Hill died and they literally yeah. didn't react to it at all and then she didn't yeah, come back, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's a very, yeah, you would have thought they'd react more to a character who's been in it since, like, 
yeah. the first films. It was like 15 years, and I was like, well, that's definitely not a permanent thing. And they went, yeah. well, yeah. It's... Nope. yeah. Like, <laughs> but no, I mean, it feels like, I feel like it should have been put more where like Winter Soldier and Falcon was. Yeah. Compared to more like Spacey is going to be not him anymore because they're going to obviously fire him, hopefully. But in the more timeline kind of a situation. But, yeah. Um, cool. So that's what we watched this week. <laughs> this month. <laughs> As it's technical difficulties. Um, yeah, so, so cool. yeah, I, yes, what I've watched is, oh, yeah, Secret Invasion, watched, um, watching The Witcher, and watched a film called Good Boy, which we'll talk about next episode because Chloe's seen it in Friday first. I'm it, not. I couldn't get tickets. So, if you could give me the screen, I'll, I'll send you the link. I'll send you the link. It is messed up, man. So I'll send that over to Clarice and over to you guys as well. And maybe we can do it next episode. Oh, it's, a, what? it's an interesting little film. <laughs> it looks fucking weird. It is weird. It is very weird. It's a but man it in a his, dog suit. But it fits this podcast perfectly. Um, yeah. Awesome. Right. As, as Niall just mentioned out, it's quite late here. So let's get on to the first film. So this week we've gone for a bit of an, a different kind of a feel to the podcast. Um, going for more some action, a little bit of... Uh, what, would you, what would you class Terminal as? Uh, uh, comedy, sort of a rom com as well, isn't it? A little yeah. Bit. yeah, a romantic comedy, and um, an awesome thriller, which Noel loves completely. Oh so yeah, we're gonna... tell me all about it yesterday. How much yeah. he loves it. <laughs> yeah, it's a hundred percent a fan. <laughs> uh, so let's start our uh, little sandwich of loveliness with um, uh, Marcus's choice. So Marcus, what was your choice for this week? My choice was Volcano, the nineties uh, one. Is nineties, isn't it? Yeah, so this week, Volcano, so starring Tommy Lee Jones. Um, Volcano appears underneath Los Angeles. That's pretty much it. There's not much of a storyline on here. His daughter goes off missing. Yeah. And all Don't that. even get started. Know. This film is this single-handedly <laughs> solves racism, as uh, Chloe mentioned in the chat before. Oh, yeah. Their to faces. sell hats! <laughs> Their faces are all the same. <laughs> Everybody go home. <laughs> race relations are fine <laughs> that was so stupid it was so exactly stupid. you do it right and everybody the... get the ash out we'll be all much off better off like this <laughs> and the whole plot line with the cops as well jesus like i was mm. like at first i was like oh this is like an a cab thing cool and then they just yeah did not do that <laughs> <laughs> i just love how it was like the biggest like everything around you is on fire and he's like right i'm gonna take you downtown get in the car <laughs> it's like now is not the time. <laughs> no, it's not time for your racism. Yeah. <laughs> made me later. laugh and his partner was like, you're a good man. It's like, no, he fucking isn't. He's <laughs> like... <laughs> a massive <laughs> <laughs> Um So I'm going to go to Marcus last because it's his pick. So, Aww. Chloe, your thoughts on this one? Um, I, I'd say this is my least favourite out of the three. Um, it had its moments and it was kind of fun, but... <sighs> I, don't, I haven't watched disaster movies in a while, actually, but I'm finding it less enjoyable now that the world is, like, actually on fire. <laughs> you know, because, like, we've recently had all the, the wildfires and things going on everywhere. So watching disaster movies like this is not escapism anymore. It's, like, less fun. It's, like, kind of like you're watching exactly <laughs> what's going to happen. escapism for you? <laughs> oh, I no, love like, it. This, this is the thing. Like, it's... I wouldn't have called disaster movies escapism, but, like... It's so mirroring reality a little bit too much that it's like mm. it's it's less enjoyable. Um, I, suppose, I suppose in the nineties you don't really expect a volcano to appear in the middle of Los Angeles, but nowadays. But like, let's be honest, it yeah. would be you know we wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, that checks out. <laughs> Just as um, you do. But what yeah. was it that you that you liked about it? What about what didn't you like? Um, I quite like Don Cheadle. 
I don't know. Mm. I just I like him in most stuff. He's just he's got a cool vibe. Um, I just I thought the effects were kind of fun. Like they're kind of like very nineties and yeah. I also really like the woman in it. Um, who's kind of like no nonsense and you know that typical kind of lead woman you'd usually have. But she's kind of cool. I like her. Um, but I just really really fucking hated the daughter in this i could not <clears throat> i was complaining to Noah about this yesterday i was like i, I was yeah. angrily texting my friend watching this because she cannot run for shit like <laughs> she literally her one job was to look after this child and she still would not run away from the building that was about to crush them tommy mm. tommy tommy had to like run all the way over there <laughs> in that time she could have literally got herself out of danger and the little child who ended racism <laughs> <laughs> but no she did not she's literally the worst because earlier in the film she's like oh can i come along with you i won't get in the way and it's like but you did get in the fucking way like he was right to not take you along <laughs> yeah <laughs> plus she was on fire it was like right was you should go to the hospital and she was like oh no i'd rather stay it's like <laughs> fuck what no I had lava <laughs> spilt onto you she yeah. literally like could have just run away from the lava she just stood there like oh. yeah. it annoyed me so much but yeah <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Um, Niall, your thoughts on this one? Um, where to begin? Well, you know when you see actors and you think, fucking hell, they are good actors having to put up with this crap. Like, how did they make it through? That's top-tier professionalism. Because mm. uh, this was not a very good film. That's all. It's, it's very 90s. It's too cheesy. It was like, um, I think it was spawned because Independence Day had just come out and then everybody <laughs> was making disaster films after then. Mm-hmm. Um, just get more Kangle hat sales. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's just, I just, I was, I, I, I'm so, you, you don't get films like this anymore and I'm very glad. <laughs> for what <laughs> Very American. It's a very just, American, very 90s. Like, yeah. 90s had that huge kind of time of disaster movies. Twister, uh, this one, uh, that one in the tunnel with um, Slice not to, with Stallone in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which I actually quite like that one. But um, yeah, there are so many of them. Too many of them. But this, I mean, there's two scenes that stick with me. Um, one, the, the, the guy, guy saving the, the driver. The guy saving the other guy. Yeah. How yeah. stupid was that? <laughs> oh, I loved it though. It was so dramatic. He was like walking out, yeah. melting. His shoes were melting. Oh, it was and then so he just heroic. fucking jumped into the puddle and threw the guy. <laughs> it was so cool. <laughs> what? <laughs> he didn't have a choice, really. But it's that yeah. sort of uh, when you do that in a film, you've got to have higher reward to what you lose. Mm. And they went in to get one guy and lost one guy, so it was pointless. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> if it ever comes down to that don't do it <laughs> then he jumps into the lava and then the director's obviously gone I seen a really good film the other day Yeah, Terminator 2 oh, yeah. did he do the middle <laughs> finger? I don't know I no, think he it was fun, fun's up, didn't he? in, the, in, in Terminator. Terminator yeah but I think yeah. it was his middle finger in this because it didn't look yeah. like his thumb yeah. um, <laughs> and also the other scene that made me laugh was at the end because it clearly it was like a pitched idea and they mm. went, oh, that's fucking, that is a brilliant idea. Yeah, we'll definitely film that. How do we end it? And he went, don't worry, we'll think of that later. Mm. Maybe when we're halfway through filming it. So like that bit, they're like, oh, we'll bring down that building onto it. And they're like, <laughs> but to bring a building down like that in an area like this, that would take four or five months. And he's like, well, you have 25 minutes. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> like, all right. We don't have that long left in this film. <laughs> yeah. It's like they got to the bit where they got all the um, like concrete blocks and spent. That's the end of the film. Like, actually, look, we've got twenty five minutes left. It's like, fuck, um, <laughs> building. <laughs> That'll work. But how would it work? I don't, don't care. Just drop the building. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> okay. It's very. I, I thought it was very nineties. I didn't mind it. It it's, wasn't good. <laughs> It's not a good film. None of these films are good. Like, you know, in, 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 none of these disaster movies are good. Apart from that one, Mr. Lone in it. it, it they're all the same. Independence uh, Day was good. Oh, yeah, the other, 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 other
wouldn't class that as a disaster movie, Dark I actually really like that one movie. with the rock in, you know, San Andreas. That wasn't too bad, actually. I quite enjoyed I that. that. <laughs> it's, it's the rock in a tower. <laughs> no, that's Skyscraper. I like Skyscraper as well. Yeah, there were like two really similar films that he was in, like, yeah. the same year. <laughs> I haven't seen that one, but San Andreas is good. No, San Andreas, that was very good as well. But it just that, that 90s kind of vibe of all these things. But... I think those uh, developed disaster films ended with, um, was it a Day After Tomorrow? Mm. That was bad. That wasn't great. And I think that killed it. But this is also from the director who did Fred's did uh, The Bodyguard. Yeah, I was surprised by that as well, because I saw Threads and I was like, really? And then I saw that, I was like, that's very... I, I respect how different those are. <laughs> I haven't seen The Bodyguard, but I kind of get the vibe. Um, yeah, trying to go for different genres. And apart yeah. from that, there wasn't an awful lot of stuff he did after that. He did one episode of Numbers, and after that, I don't know, nothing. <laughs> he kind of just went for like really crap made for TV movies after that. Okay. Which is pretty much a bodyguard. But there you go. It's an Essex man as well. He's from uh, Averley in Essex. That's go. weird. There so Marcus, go on. What are your thoughts on this one? You picked this one. Um, yeah, no, actually, this was um, a pick that Ali wanted to do. Uh, she's really into her disaster movies and I mentioned that, oh, I could do this one. She was like, oh, good. Yes, no, I love that film. I was like, great. <laughs> Don't blame her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically uh, if it's really good then i definitely chose it if it's really bad then well she influenced me didn't she so yeah. <laughs> she's looking at me like what the fuck are you on about <laughs> like, now you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she, wow now she says there's better films anyway um <laughs> yeah no I, I liked it. it it was a like you lot have all said a, a classic sort of american 90s film like all of the sort of tropes and everything's there it it just i don't know it it feels nice that like you you don't expect anything uh realistic or um you know accurate out of this it's just a good watch it's like mm. watching a fast and furious film you know that's not realistic but it's still fun to watch it's kind of just easy um, isn't it it's just stick on and like like run mm. you know <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. I, I do think the afternoon lot... movie yeah I, I do feel like um you know if we're going to go for accuracy uh the people that were standing around the lava or hell when the the main guy with his daughter's on top of that jeep thing trying to jump out uh from the lava um heat rises uh, you know they're not going to just be sat there absolutely fine <laughs> that, that's going to be very fucking hot and i'm pretty sure pretty certain they'd even get set on fire from the heat or their you know their hair clothes would burn something um if they didn't you know, know melt. but as well at times they're like you know oh you're right next to that heat things are melting but when they don't want it to be melty, they go right next to that lava and nothing happens. Yeah, yeah. It behaves yeah. very well. It almost behaves the way they wanted it to in the film. Yeah, well, Exactly. But, uh, yeah. You know, one accuracy. thing I did look up, because I, I thought, oh, this is going to be a, a, a fun fact to find out, is they used concrete barriers, didn't they, to stop that lava? And I was thinking, mm. hmm, what's the melting point of concrete? Which is about 12,000, sorry, not 12,000, 1,200 degrees Celsius, roughly. Mm depending on its conditions. Lava can burn anywhere from something like 700 to 1200 degrees. So technically that lava could have been hot enough to just melt through it all. Um, yeah. I don't yeah, think buses are lava proof. No, well, we found that out in the film because it did kind of just sort of plow through it in the end, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's a good film. I do feel like they all would have burnt up from the heat, not just standing mm. going, oh, guys, it's a little bit hot here. Anyway, uh, put more trucks in there. Yeah, I'll tip the bus over. Yeah, everyone listen to me. You have no clue who I am, but I'm going to tell you to do something and you're going to do it because you don't care. Like that, you know, take all that side out of it. Um, yeah, it, it's a, an easy watch, as Chloe said. It's my goddamn job. And all I do is my job because it's my Your job. Your job is at a desk. God damn it. I've got to get out there and do my job. This is why my wife left me. <laughs> But, but what I'm just was so into job? my job. She always said, you're married to the job. And I said, yeah, because it's my job. <laughs> it's like, it is like Fast and Furious, but instead of the word job, you've got the word family in Fast and Furious. Mm. Exactly. Also, it's I love how they, coinciden <laughs> they coincidentally picked um, the building to knock over as that guy who was a bit of a dick to that girl uh, 
for going to save people and it just so happened to be a brand new building with no one inside oh, yeah. it just happened to be there and they're like oh yeah let's just blow it up that way i was <laughs> expecting that other guy to just die in his building he's like no yeah, we're just holding on to the top yeah. yeah where was their headquarters i don't know somewhere safe safe land it's actually they didn't get affected oh, by it yeah. at all no. away from the lava and the exploding buildings because buildings obviously explode and it hits lava because he goes exactly he goes to the guy who wants his job he was like how did you get to work so fast and he was like you know me job i live here <laughs> and then that was it was like, <laughs> right you know I live my here. wife left me <laughs> yeah is he sleeping at the office is there something we should know maybe so I'm when the uh, guy came around um who had the sort of row with the cop uh trying to call all the fire engines around to his street yeah um i was thinking like by the end of the the time they'd finished with that area of the lava like no one seemed to remember that you know there is multiple streets they've covered one street out of hundreds in that area um they're going to go back to those houses and they're, they're not going to be there anymore <laughs> they didn't really sort of seem to care about that <laughs> so, yeah your houses are gone bye sorry oh god i just remembered the bit with the dog oh, oh i was so yeah. happy that dog was fine oh that was so cringe <laughs> oh you got out oh yeah <laughs> they're all standing outside going dog dog and then he's <laughs> inside doing like a home alone like <laughs> <laughs> okay and then he just goes out the dog flap so he could have done that the entire time <laughs> the dog was scared stupid fucking dog he went, that's good. He was kicking up the lava. That's yeah. good. He looked fine. Yeah. yeah. Anything else you guys want to add? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I love the heroic scene. Jumping in yeah. the lava, throwing the body. That was just like, hey, good on you. But he still died, like though. Like Mal said, it's just it's a body for a body. Yeah. But I suppose he's just thinking, help. Got to help. It's his job. And the All driver might die anyway, because he was basically cooked. Oh, and that one girl, like and, and, and that girl who seems like she might be quite a big part of the storyline, just dies randomly in a hole. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Anyway, right. So I'm gonna go to Clary first, then, because uh, we've run out of time on this podcast this time around. Um, keep building it. Um, I might bin it, you know. Ooh. Yeah. That's a I great don't... one from you. Yeah, I just I wouldn't watch it again. I don't think. Yeah. It takes a lot for Chloe to bin a movie. I don't, I don't like hate it, but it's like, I just didn't. You would watch it again, kind of. Yeah, way. I don't know. Okay. Not enough clowns or murder. Yeah, exactly, yeah. not enough murder. <laughs> not enough murder clowns. <laughs> um, no, I'll keep it up in it. Yeah, same. I think I will bin it. Like Chloe said, I've, I've seen it now. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really need to see it again. <laughs> I might have to join you in that one. I don't think I'll sit and watch it again. I think it's it's out it, it's outdated. It feels outdated, even though a lot of the other films around this time I still live up quite well to it, what it does now. It's a bit back then to now. Um, I can't see myself watching it. I don't think Tommy Lee Jones is particularly the best kind of <gasps> action what? hero in this movie. And I think this, this matches his role. He, he plays more of the, the, the stern-faced kind of I don't think it was a weird choice, actually. Mm. Like he's not your typical action hero guy. To be fair, no. I this, never this, understand this would, this would why. Fit someone uh... like Sly Stallone or something like that. Weird. Yeah, it's like when people cast Liam Neeson and stuff like this. I don't, I don't get why he. He would like, have uh... worked, worked perfectly fine in this movie, though. Would he though? Yeah. I think he's always sort of the same as Tommy Lee Jones, where he just sort of it's just it's just a bloke. Well, it's definitely his type of film, though. You know, his daughter's in danger. Huh? This time she's against Lava. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm gonna fight you, in, Volcano. <laughs> at least in Taken, his daughter actually is useful and you know, looks after herself. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Marcus, keep it up in it. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to be the odd one out. I could easily see this as a just throw it on the film, watch it again. I keep it. It you know, I get what you lot are saying, but it's not that bad. I like it. That's to defend it, it's his movie. <laughs> It's my film, not yours. <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay, cool. So, let's go on to our second film in this. You said it was easy about a shit sandwich. I'm thinking this film should have been on, should have been the first one we spoke about because this is one of the better films out of all of them. Um, Chloe, There's something you... very wrong with you. What? <laughs> it's the man who picked the baby. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Are you because of, <laughs> of the person who picked this film in the first place? Chloe. Um, what is your film choice for this week? Uh, one hour photo. You're a good man.
good husband and father, a man who appreciates his good fortune. You're not the type of father who'd cheat on his wife, hurt his family, betray their trust. You would never neglect and abuse your children. demands of your children. You would never ask. You would never ask your children to do things. Things that children shouldn't do. You would never take disgusting, sick, degrading pictures of your children doing these things. You would never treat your children like animals. Will Yorkin had it all and he threw it all away. He's not a good father. So why did you why did you pick one hour photo just so the others um, can know? <laughs> well, we needed to pick something from Disney Plus. And this has been my watch list for a while. So I thought, oh, yeah, we'll do that. So you've um, never seen this one before? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. But yeah, I've been meaning to for a long time because uh, I really want to see Robin Williams in that really creepy role <laughs> that I'd mm. heard so much about. And yeah, I'm glad I did. I very much liked it. Okay. Before we get on to exactly what you liked about it, I'm going to put you down the class because obviously you picked this movie. So I'm going to go for... <laughs> Who's going to rant about this the most? Go to Niall first. Niall, your thoughts <laughs> on this movie? <laughs> Oh, it's cringy. It's creepy. We're supposed to be. Don't get why it was made. It's just weird. Every weird little choice about it is just odd. Yeah, it's just okay, Mark. <laughs> like every interaction is just so. I mean, ugh. Yeah, but for the the whole storyline does work. Yeah, but does it? Because it doesn't really have a payoff at all. I don't get what the moral of this story is. If you're a complete creep, you'll end up in jail. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, it feels like he didn't take any pictures of like the end. Obviously, spoilers. The obviously by now you know from this podcast <laughs> completely ruined volcano for you. But um, the end scene though, when he's taking pictures of the dad, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's affair. Don't really do it. I'm really put it in your mouth. Um, but I, I would probably argue that. And this is controversial, but having an affair with someone is probably slightly better than attempted murder. I would say. <laughs> but I don't think it was, I don't think his intentions were ever to murder them. It's just to basically just to prove a point. Uh, <laughs> it just made them, you know, yeah. basically have sex ru- with each other. It, it ruined nice point. his perfect. It ruined his perfect life that he thinks he has. That he didn't have. It's kind of. A, I don't know. I'll get into it. I'll talk about it anyway. But. You're, you're, what, 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 what did what did you did like about it? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, do you know, I like the bit. I like the bits in the shop where all the shop mm. workers around him, uh, especially his boss, because his boss fucking knows. He's like, this guy's fucking weird. That's why he's like watching him on the cameras. Mm. Like, what the fuck's he doing? He's doing something. <laughs> he's giving away a lot of stuff. Mm. <laughs> Free camera. Yeah. What? Yeah. I mean, he just being nice, wasn't he? He wasn't. He was being creepy. No, it was his. It was his. New, it was his new nephew, wasn't it? In the, in no, the- it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, child. Take a camera. <laughs> what did you hate most about this movie? Then? Um, I do you know what really rubs me up. The, there's one. There's two scenes that really get me. Um, mm. One is the one where it's in his mind. He just goes to their house and sits on the sofa, and then they come oh. back. <laughs> yeah. uh, when the door handle goes, you go, "Oh, run, run, run!" Because mm. he's like just sitting there, and like you're expecting their reactions to be like screaming and stuff. But then it turns out it's part of his like it's all in his it's mind. Fantasy, yeah. Um, that oh, that gets me every time. I think that Ooh. seems a little bit like it's just a little bit funny. When you consider the fact that there's that bit where he's like sat on the toilet, yeah, 
And he like he imagined you you think about how he imagined this whole scenario. He imagined going to the toilet in this house, like for yeah. some reason. I kind of love it from that perspective. That's a bit funny. <laughs> and the other bit is where the kid's playing baseball and he's the only one in the stands, and then he tries mm. to give that kid the action figure. But it's done in such a like it's done in such a child abductor way mm. that it just oh it's horrible. Yeah. Is it because it's Robin Williams, though? Or if it was a different actor doing it, would it have bothered you as much? Yeah, but it does add a level of weirdness to it that you quickly get over by how weird the rest of the film is. I think if you stuck anybody in that role, it would have been a fucking creepy film. But yeah, it is weird that that it's him. Just to Mm. add to that, Noel, apparently Gary Cole was meant to be uh, Psy, but uh, when Robin Williams... uh read the script he asked for them to switch roles because uh the, uh gary's the one who plays um bill his manager yeah so those actors were meant to switch roles um but after uh williams said oh no i want to be cy uh the guy uh, uh, gary took the role as manager because he wanted to work with him and uh yeah that's how it turned out that's so such... i'm reading up facts we're talking about this and yeah that's one of them that's such a bizarre role to want to do if that if yeah it's his character more though it does fit. Yeah, it it does, does fit him in a way because yeah. you know he's this, this this nice guy generally, and he he's supposed to come across as this kind of this friendly guy, a little bit of a loner. Obviously, Are we going to have to have the talk with you what? about getting in people's vans? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you just being nice? No, no, you're not, no. But as he thinks he's being nice, he just thinks he's being nice. Obviously, he's a creep. Obviously, yeah. But, hmm. Okay, Marcus, your thoughts <laughs> on this one? Uh, oh my god, the, the entire film, I just felt uncomfortable. <laughs> it's not oh, yeah, nice to watch. Yeah, me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I know, I know, that's the thing, it's a I good film. i made you guys watch worse, come on. Oh god, you have. But no, it's a good <laughs> film. Um, I'm glad I've watched it. it there, there's good scenes in there, uh, good camera work, like Niall mentioned with the uh, the scene where he's sort of going around the house drinking a beer on the sofa. And the door handle goes, and you just think, shit. And he like gets himself up as if he's got to run. And then they look at him and like, oh, hey, Sai, like, as normal. And you think, what the fuck? And then it goes back to him imagining it all. It was like, my heart was on edge that entire time. Like, it just didn't feel right. <laughs> um, but yeah, this guy, he's the, the plot, uh, well, the character Sai, he's a creepy person who he just wants to be included in the family that in his eyes is perfect. And obviously, as the film goes on in that, that perfect perception of the family is ruined. He just gets so angry. Uh, a f- few things I did read about this is, um, of course, when he's um, sort of interrogating Will at the end, uh, he keeps saying things like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, pose like this, do as I say, like, hush. And, you know, he's like telling, like, put that thing in your uh, your mouth to the girl. And, you know, he's being really fucking horrible to her. And then when he talks to the police officer at the end, he's uh, explaining how, oh, you know, you wouldn't just sit there and take photos of your children doing things they shouldn't do. And he, he basically makes it sound like he's gone through past trauma and i think the whole concept and the mm. theories i read on reddit is that when he was a child he got abused by his parents and mm. uh all that trauma is coming out in anger as he's now trying to punish will at the end um the only thing mm. that i didn't quite make sense of is obviously when he asks to look at his photos uh, there's none of the ones of them naked and one theory i read was he didn't actually take the photos of them naked um and he was just going through the motions to humiliate will but he didn't want to make himself feel uh as uh down low as his parents were yeah yeah um and the reason why he was smiling at his photos is he's happy that he didn't let himself get to that level uh another Mm. theory was obviously the police won't let him have those kind of photos (laughs) and they just took him out because someone else noted that the amount of photos he was given wasn't enough to fill a complete camera roll which as we saw earlier in the film Sai hates uh, wasting camera uh rolls so he could have just taken those photos out um but either way deranged character uh very well filmed all the scenes are thought out correctly uh it, it's just, it fucks up your mind <laughs> the whole way but a uh, very uh disappointing ending though it doesn't quite give you a satisfaction of what's going to happen to him like, you know he's going to be arrested but it leaves it very oh, loose oh, you're like, definitely uh, to jail. <laughs> yeah so i want it to, i want to hear like oh you've been jailed because of this and just it, it there's so much what ifs like what mm. what's happening here and uh some people love that but i personally don't okay I quite like that, but I'm going to go to Chloe first. Chloe, what do you think of this movie? 
Um, yeah, I really liked it. I felt really unsettled the entire time, and I just love the way the film looks. Like, I, I was watching this video. I don't know what made me think of it, but I, like, I was watching it. I remind me of this video I watched recently on YouTube about how some people feel weird in like supermarkets because mm. of the way everything is looks so unnatural, like the lights are so unnatural and like the colors. Mm. And that's what this film reminded me of, like because most of it is set in like the supermarket that he works in, and everything just has this like yellow tint to it, and it's just like a bit fluorescent and weird, yeah. and it's just it's kind of off putting. Um, it almost like has a bit of a snuff film look to it at, mm. at points. Um, yeah, it's dirty, it's just, isn't it? It's like dirty, dirty and like I was saying to Niall about how like Robin Williams looks so creepy like with his like blonde hair and like blue eyes that like really like pop yeah what were they going for was it like a jeffrey Dahmery sort of thing yeah i think it's just because we're so used to seeing him look a certain way and making that shift and like really bringing out those features like makes him look so different it's kind of it kind of feels weird like it's like you're looking at someone else yeah um but yeah it was like (laughs) there's no like there's no real violence or anything but it just feels so violating at points and it's kind of our worst nightmare isn't it but it's also like he's such a disturbing character and also so sad like there is some sort of like side to him that you can empathize with a little bit not to the extent that you can excuse what he does but you can kind of see that sadness in him and like even the kid sees that sadness in him um and in a way he feels quite childlike at times still um i'd I'd say my my least favorite thing is at the end when they sort of give away his backstory completely um it just felt very tack tacked on at the end and like i don't know it just i think a lot of people have that issue with this film from what i was reading um and i do agree with that i wish if they were going to do that they could have like hinted at it more like and not just like stuck it at the end and like had him reveal basically so obviously what he had been through, um, but yeah, I over really liked it. Okay, cool. I'm gonna say this is basically a pre a, a sequel to Jumanji because they've got the same surname. So oh, yeah, basically, I heard about that. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's a drama that Alan Parrish went through in Jumanji has led him to do this. <laughs> I, not quite the same. Uh, I hope. <laughs> well, we never will. Well, you know. The things he went through in that place, you never know. Exactly. <clears throat> but this is part of his kind of. When you get to like the two thousands, he stops kind of doing more of the family stuff as much. You got kind of bicentennial man is kind of his last nineties one. Then he's got a little role in um, AI, but then he goes one hour photo. You then he got insomnia, final cut. He go for more of the darker roles, and he does really well in the darker roles. He's taken a lot of the dark stuff. I don't know if that's more because around this time, then his mood started to change a lot. Because obviously, you know, mid two thousands when he kind of took his life, but he started to take more of the darker roles around that time. So maybe it's just him trying to, I don't know, get out of family movie kind of stuff. Because you know, the nineties are gone now. A lot of stuff gets darker and more towards the two thousands. So. Bicentennial Man is one of the saddest films ever made. It was an amazing film. It's it very is, long though. It just it, it breaks me every time. I can't. Mm. Horrible. It's like three hours long. Yeah, it's sort of also the same story. Sorry, as Interstellar in a way, because mm. it's about aging and um, basically losing stuff. I think. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's that film. I really love One Hour Photo. This is about the fifth time I've watched this one. It, I think it's one of for his... real. <laughs> no, seriously, no. It, it, this oh, is actually one, yeah. one of my one of my top ones of oh, his work. Actually, oh, I'm sent to the unbinable. I think oh, it's because God. he. It's because you're so used to him being in family movies by this point. I saw this more around when it came out, and to see him kind of change into this more darker role. It, shows his range as an actor in my opinion and uh, he's great in insomnia he's okay in night listener like Listener wasn't the most amazing movie but it, well, the role he takes the more kind of 
haunting roles, he does really well. And he does creepy so well for somebody who's been a family name for such a long time. So to take this role on, it's, 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 it's a good choice for him around this time. Um, yeah, it's uncomfortable. But I don't mind feeling uncomfortable. I'm a horror fan. So, <laughs> you know, I like to feel uncomfortable. And the film making me feel uncomfortable adds to that for me in a way we might not do that same for you two possibly but okay yeah there's some bits are a little bit cringe but the overall story arc it fits with him it fits with that kind of loner mentality the wishing he had a family if this if the kind of the backstory like marcus was saying is true it's mental trauma wanting to have it was his perfect family it's what we wanted is his perfect family the perfect wife, the perfect husband, just to be that uncle figure. But to see it all kind of break apart, he blames the husband for obviously ruining it all for him. It's like, you've ruined my perfect family. I'm going to make you suffer. I don't think he took the pictures. I think he literally just took random pictures because it very matches the boys' pictures in a way. It's random stuff. So, that's what. But I, I love this film. I think it's one of his best ones. Uh, something I've noticed when I was looking through some facts earlier, apparently there was an earlier cut, like one of the originals, yeah. where he did take the photos and the police were reviewing them, but they've chose to uh, later on remove that uh, scene to leave it up to the viewers to decide whether or not he took them. Hmm. So it gives you that choice. freedom. It's a, very, it's a good choice, actually. So yeah. I was actually going to say this earlier because at the beginning, mm. um, the first time I saw this was about 10 years ago or something. Mm. I swear it starts different. I swear there's another scene at the front of this movie that has him waiting in the living room when it's Christmas. And he's actually there with, like, a present. I don't remember that. I, I don't know if they online. There was different... It said there was different versions, and uh, apparently there's one. To, uh, there's also an extended edition of this, apparently, that yeah. isn't released to people just to get whenever. I think it was at Fright Fest or something. I have to find the thing again. But um, it included more monologues from the uh, Psy... And just sort of overviewing the whole thing. Yeah, I think it was uh, different the first time I saw it because it didn't seem as creepy and on edge as it was last time. Like I actually mm. watched it through this time, and there was only like I've still got cringy and ugh, but it so was a lot easier that, to watch. When you're saying it makes you feel cringy, I mean you've you've been doing this podcast and the other podcast so long. What is it about this that makes you uncomfortable compared to some of the other stuff you've watched? It's just horrible. It's just, ugh, I can't explain it. It's just, it's someone, basically, it is just stalker, horrible. It's just, I don't, it, yeah, I can't it's really explain it. It's of it. It's, yes, because it's really, like, it's one of those ones where it's really obvious that it's happening. Mm. Like, everything he says to them and everything he does and giving them free stuff and trying to give the kid a toy and even the kid's like, yeah, no, I don't want to take that, thanks. Because mm. it's so blatant and you don't know which way it's going to go because it could mm. quite easily turn in him, like, abducting the kid and, you know, killing the whole family and it mm. just, yeah. And Would it that have been a better ending then? It, it would probably been about the same, I would have thought. It's still just as weird. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, let's uh, let's let's uh, get the answer to the always um, answer answerable question. Chloe, keep your in it. I'm going to keep it. Uh, Marcus, keep your in it. I'm going to keep it as well. It is an uncomfortable watch. Um, although I will just say one last fact that I found. Apparently. Jack Nicholson was offered this role originally and he turned it down because of his role in The Shining thinking they were too similar. If it was played by Jack Nicholson, would you all have felt differently? <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's been a bit weird, it would have been a very different film. Yeah. This, this matches Robin Williams too well. Uh, no, keep it up in it. Oh, it's going to have been. It's not my kind of film, I'm afraid, but the filming was good. And um, a lot of the scenes were set up very nice, but that's literally... Yeah, I like I like the bits in the shop. <laughs> That's about it. I like the shop. It reminds shop me of my past. <laughs> <laughs> reminds me of when it reminds me of my photo studio that I work in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The amount Brilliant. of families he's seen go by. Oh. 
Do you remember? I missed them all. This is an, an, an unbinnable for me. There you Ooh. go. Fight me. I'll fight he said the all. line. He said it. <laughs> um, cool. Right, to our third and final film before it gets too late. Um, we're going to Nile. So, Nile, what is your film choice this month? It's Terminal. So, she had a boyfriend. Hmm. For how long? Two years? And what happened? Eat shit. What? Eat shit. Eat shit? Eat shit. Eat shit, eat shit, eat shit. Well, okay, try to repeat exactly what she said. Eat shit, she catch him. So oh, he cheats. Yes, yes, ah. yes, yes. What we call cross catch. We cross say catch. we say cross catch. Uh-huh. Yes. One man, uh-huh. two women. Uh-huh. So mm. crowded, you know. Okay. He, he cheats. Mm-hmm. You say cheats, it not cheats. shit. No, no, cheat. Very good. You? No shit. <laughs> no cheat. No shit. Yeah, yeah, no. no I, want, I want, I want cheat, she's, not shit. She's a nice, okay. nice girl. She won't take your shit. <laughs> um, and that one knows what that terminal. is. Uh, exactly. It's the terminal, isn't it? Is it the terminal or terminal? Uh, the it's terminal. the terminal. Terminal is the one with... Um... Oh, here is it. Uh, Simon Pegg and Mike Myers in. Ah, that is the one. Yeah. So, The Terminal is about a... I mean, Russian, he's Russian, isn't he? Let's just say, no. say it's Russian. No? Well, it's from a little sort of ex-Soviet Bulgaria. Union country that disappears. Okay. There you go. From an ex-Soviet Union country. Uh, Soviet Union country. I'm trying to say that far. Is it not Bulgaria? No. Yeah. It's definitely Russian-based. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I know he's Who oh, is yeah, travelling to America to... Again, spoilers. Um, live out a bit of a dream that his father, who's passed, to finish off what he was trying to do with getting names of jazz singers. However, uh, his country has been bombed; it no longer exists, so he can't enter the US. Unacceptable. Uh, and he, and he can't go back. He's unacceptable. He's unacceptable. So um, he must now live inside the airport because he refuses to leave. So, and many funny things and many romantic things ensue. So, Niall. Yes. I bet you last. Chloe, what do you think of this movie? It made me feel great joy. I liked it a lot. Um, it's really sad at the start, and but then it gets to like, it's really sweet, and it becomes a bit of a sort of romantic comedy kind of thing. And it's basically just about a really kind man who just like is put in this really weird situation, and he kind of survives. In it and kind of flourishes in it against all the odds. Um, I do find the the sort of the other romance in it with Zoe Saldana and the other guy whose name I'm blanking on right now <laughs> from the Star Wars Wrong movies. And or. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Um, I found that kind of got lost a little bit in it. Like it's quite a long film, but like I kind of forgot about them at one point, and then like I just wish that had been picked up a bit more throughout. I have a theory about that. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, you you can tell me now. the theory. <laughs> <laughs> I can do. Yeah, um, go on. So I think that basically everything we're being shown is either stuff that he sees in the, the airport hmm. or that he sort of dreams up because it's happening outside the airport because obviously oh, yeah. he's stuck in the airport, hmm. which is why their marriage scene is filmed with like this really weird fairy tale like filter Hmm. like it's not really happening there's no passengers anywhere it doesn't seem real and those two characters never have a single line with each other and i think that's because he's never actually seen them speak he's acting Hmm. as a go-between between between both of them so you see them talk to him but you don't see them talk to each other at all Hmm. so i think they've got i think they've got a relationship but it happens strictly outside of the airport Interesting. Yeah, no, that would make sense. Yeah, I like that theory. I'll go with that. Um, but uh, yeah, Tom Hanks is just really cute and likable in this. Um, and I I love Stanley Tucci. Like, he's such an asshole in this. Yeah. But mm-hmm. he, he's such a charismatic actor that you just kind of can't help but love him a little bit as well. It's like, you're terrible, but also I just enjoy watching him on screen. Um, 
I actually think he would be my other choice for one hour photo. Because <laughs> if yeah. you've ever seen him in The Lovely Bones, you will know oh, he can creepy. be a fucking creep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I when I watched these two films, I was like, yeah, I could see that, you know. Um, but yeah, I just, I think it's, uh, I love the ending that everyone just kind of takes on that kind of attitude that he has and that he's at, like had this effect on other people where even mm. the people who should be working against him are like on his side <laughs> um and yeah i i just i thought it was really good um and it's actually based on a real guy um in france who was kept in an airport for a while and then he just lived there like he yeah, chose I, read to about live that. There. <laughs> I was like that's so <laughs> wild i think he died only recently like a few years ago um but yeah, See, I, thought, I, I found that, that absolutely insane. I, I googled it because I was like, it, it's going to be one of those things that's so wacky, but has definitely <laughs> happened. Yeah, so like, like you I've could make it up. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Right, Marcus, your thoughts on this one? Um, yeah, no, I, I love this film. It was great. Uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The country he's from is uh, Krakosia, apparently. Krakosia. Which, yeah, you were, Krakosia. You were right, uh, right. It's, uh, yes, Krakosia. It's Soviet state. Yes, I'm scared um, of uh, ghosts, <laughs> but not Krakosha. of this room. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, it's a great film. A, a mixture of comedy and romance. Just, I'm glad that the guy, the girl who plays Amelia, didn't end up getting it with uh, Victor because she was. Don't be wrong, she was nice to him in terms of helping him get that one day visa, but she was an absolute bitch to him in terms of relationship she was literally like oh yeah you're perfect uh you've literally waited for me but i'm still gonna fuck you over and go and screw the other guy again it's like really okay this is on you now like i don't care for you anymore um but other than her uh the rest of the film was great i love that everyone started making friends with him and uh over time they're like actually you're an all right guy um they started including him their little underground giving everyone's lost property out (laughs) um and uh, yeah, it just became such a, a lovable character that the um, sort of oh, God, what was the guy's name? The top chief guy is trying to get rid of him. Anyone uh, remember his name? Can't remember his actual name. Oh, uh, Frank Dixon. That was it. Uh, Frank's trying to get rid of him so badly, but just can't because everyone's like, "Yeah, no, he's all right." And just the scenes where he's watching on the camera and everyone stood there just staring and watching. Um, just him collecting trolleys even just to get money. And he just adapts so well, uh, teaching himself genius. better English. Yeah, by uh, learning from different manuals and the seam of the uh, the pills. Uh, and he's like, oh, yeah, that's for a goat. Yeah, totally not for his father. <laughs> it's like in real life, it, that wouldn't happen, obviously. But it's just stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really nice thoughtful film uh all the things that are happening uh just he's just trying to be nice i don't know why he uh has such good diy skills um that part confuses me this guy never seems to sleep just yeah, uh no one's here let's just uh redo the toilets or let's just redo this wall <laughs> it just doesn't happen like that but... i love that because uh, yeah. the contractor's looking on him going what's he doing he goes i can't ask him what he's doing because <laughs> yeah. i'm meant to be his boss <laughs> <laughs> No, exactly. Oh, but no, the other scene that always cracked me up is uh, the potato chip sheet. He's like, right, so this is your country, uh, and these are the rebels, and bam, <laughs> just smash it over. He's like, yeah. that's what happened. <laughs> it's He's the like, oh. plate spinning scene that always gets me. Yeah. <laughs> always forget it's coming, and then it, it <laughs> gets me every time. <laughs> I think the Indian um, guy is is my favorite character in this. He's absolutely yeah. iconic. Oh. So dark as well. Like the juxta juxtaposition, is that right? Yeah, we'll go with it. Sounds fancy. Cool. Yeah, of his character is just like yeah, it's like <laughs> polar opposites. Mm. Go on and now, uh, your thoughts on this movie? I love this film so much. I've seen it like ten times, and every time I watch it, it makes me feel very happy. <laughs> and I would watch it again, and I will. And I think I have it on DVD somewhere. Um, <laughs> it's just brilliant. It's just hilarious, I think. But it's not like in your face funny. Like, I wouldn't outright say it was a comedy. Um, it's just got such well-written characters in it. Like, every character has their own personality. 
and everything they say you like sometimes in a big film like that you can tell like the same people have written it because mm-hmm. everybody sort of says the same sort of stuff but these people feel like they're real mm-hmm. and i love that it's just i i honestly think it's one of steven spielberg's best films mm-hmm. um it's absolutely crazy weird. the range of reviews I'd seen on this. Like, some people hate it, yeah. some people love it. It's like, there's no middle ground, it seems. <laughs> yeah, when it came out, I think it was genuinely panned. That's ridiculous. And I think that's why no one really knows what it is, because it's just, mm. it just got lost, I think. Mm. Whether it came out and there was a lot of other big films on, or whether it's just the fact that it was a Steven Spielberg film and people expect, you know, something a bit different from him. Like dinosaurs. <laughs> Yeah, but I just I, I just don't get it because it's just got such a nice... Everyone's got a character arc. It's just got a perfect ending. Like, at the with the Indian guy stopping the plane. And then um, in the main security guy turning him round and you think he's going to send him back to the airport and then he puts his coat on him. <laughs> the other guy's watching on the CCTV again. We're going, oh no. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and then he kind of runs outside, and no one speaks to him. And he's like, "Okay, fine, everybody in. We've got stuff to do." <laughs> it's just so brilliant. I love it. Stop it, are we? Um... Yeah. When well, he drops his cup of tea as well, he's like, "Oh shit!" Mm. Mm. Okay. I, okay. I think it's like um, I think he was going for like a fairy tale sort of thing, mm. where it's it's sort of like a modern adaptation of. Like a like a grim story, I guess. There's not really much that came out that year. I mean, you got stuff like Shaun the Dead, Mean Girls, The Notebook, Man on Fire. That's some quite like... big films. <laughs> yeah, it was Shaun the, Shaun the Dead and Mean Girls, possibly. The others not so. Yeah. Much. How can you compare those two? Like those are all like <laughs> staples of their genres. <laughs> like... Yeah. How's Moving Castle came out in 2004? Oh, oh the Ghibli one. Hmm. Ghibli, Ghibli. Then, you know, White Chicks, Saw. Okay, it's quite good. Quite good. Deal. Fucking but hell, for, though. For, for, for movies <laughs> like this, break like, up a little bit. wasn't anything kind of like this, really, apart yeah. from. Yeah. There's not much kind of in that romantic comedy kind of a genre, really, that's really jumping out at me. Mostly comedies and horror. Good deal for, for comedies and horror. Do any of you have a favourite scene? Um. I like the bit where he starts working for the contractors mm. and then the main boss guy is like, how much are they paying him? And he's like, well, he's getting paid cash in hand, but we think it's this much. And he's like, that's more than I'm being paid. <laughs> <laughs> New, it's like, well, New York, uh, New York. Contractors, yeah. Um, I love the goat scene. That's probably my favorite. I do love the goat scene. Because it's just, it's like pure chaos, but like everybody's like, you can see some people are like really awkward in that situation. And then, yeah, I just love it. It's just brilliant. It's literally just brilliant to watch because it's, yeah. Mm. This might be a weird one, but I like the bit where, you know, he's doing all the trolleys and stuff. And then they invent a role to stop him from getting all the money (laughs) off the trolleys. (laughs) Yeah. Because they're just like trying everything they can to like stop him from succeeding in this place. And yet, it's got like a manages. really fancy name as well, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like transport li- li- liaison. Passenger assistance or something. Yeah. Mine is when he goes for the job and they're going, oh, um, have you got a phone number? And you're like, one second. <laughs> One second. Gets the paper. He just sits there all day. <laughs> yeah. Waiting for a phone call. <laughs> okay. Just watch I, go, him. I go. I go to bathroom now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, My I, favorite scene. Oh, go, sorry, sorry, Mark. No, go, go, Mark. I was just gonna say, mine's probably the cab driver at the end. He's like, "Oh, when did you arrive in uh, New York?" He goes, "Hmm." Thursday. <laughs> it just drives <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. That checks out. Uh, I absolutely love this film. It's possibly my sixth on my list of the year so far. It's just underneath Grand Budapest Hotel, but it's, yeah, I, I've i never seen this one before. It's always been on my list. I think it's a similar kind of thing what Niall was saying is I didn't really know much about it when it came out. It didn't really kind of jump out 
really. It's kind of one of those Spielberg films where you just don't really kind of think about it. But I really regret not watching it. It's one of the best films I've seen in a long time. It just makes you feel happy. Um, it's so random. But it's so <laughs> funny at points. And it's just such a lovely little watch. And yeah, yeah, highly recommend this one. Um, I'll even start off by asking the question and I'll say I'm binnable for myself. So, Chloe, keep it up in it. I'm also going to say I'm binnable. Oh, oh, two for two. Marcus, keep it bent. It's a yes from me. That's three unbiddables. Ooh, and Niall. Oh, I didn't like it, Ben. No, okay. it is unbiddable. <laughs> it's one of my favourite films of all time, I think. It's, it's so, so warm and like, fuzzy, I, isn't it? Yeah. It's just lovely. Nah, you'd, be, you'd, be, you'd prefer one hour photo, wouldn't it? This is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I must admit, it was weird watching those two films in quite close <laughs> succession to each other. Mm-hmm. It's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So that is our three films this week. A bit of a mixed bag of uh, reactions. Some I was surprised about from Marcus. Um, I thought he would have uh, been one hour photo from the way he was talking at the start. Um, it's just well made. That's why I can't. Otherwise I would. Yeah. That's what we all say. <laughs> <I'm telling you. laughs> um, but next episode, I don't actually know what we're doing. Thank you all for listening to the podcast. Uh, do give us a like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. Um, iTunes, Spotify, wherever. Um, and as always, a huge shout out to our sponsor at Bottle Book Club. They are the UK's best and greatest UK horror and thriller book box service, bringing the ones of a haunted bookshop straight to your door each month. You can get the Bare Bones box, which is just two books and a possibly haunted second hand book or you can get the full guts box which is a brand new book a possibly haunted second hand book and another indie title along with some badges bags recently um snacks bookmarks and some hot drinks as well to get you through those uh those night times where you just want to sit and have a book read out in the garden it's a, it's a spring now let's get a bit warmer so go and check it out. Go and use the code Bloody Good Reads at checkout, and uh, yeah, get ten percent off your next box. As always, you can catch us over on Twitter at Bloody Good Reads or Bloody Underscore Screen. 